Hello and welcome back to 340 Paddler. Today I want to talk to you about the long day. We are getting to that time of the year. The 340 is a couple of months away and people are really starting to think about training. And perhaps the most important part of training is going to be the long day. Now it should seem fairly obvious. It's a long race. You're going to do some long paddles. I mean it's but at the same time it's very very different so when you think about the closest event you would have otherwise maybe a running ultra marathon or a marathon you would never try and cover the total distance during your long day you don't during the 340 either for the purposes of this video a long day is going to be about a six hour paddle could be a little longer, could be a little shorter, but we're shooting for about six hours. Something that's going to tire you out and start showing you some weaknesses. And in terms of uh, training and getting this long day in, we don't all do long days. I personally haven't done a six hour long day in training for quite some time. I've run a couple of races, South Dakota Kayak Challenge and the one coming up will be the Missouri River Freedom Race, perhaps the best tune-up race you could possibly use for the 340. If you're in Missouri or anywhere else, heck, I drive down from Wisconsin eight hours to do this race. It will put you on the river at a midpoint and be incredibly useful for you. And some of us just do two or three of these races as our long days leading up to the 340. But there is a purpose to this madness of the long day. First of all, training. Just getting your body used to doing the same thing over and over again for hours at a time. Actually, you're pretty used to it. I mean, you probably sit at a computer or you lay bricks or whatever else, and you do that for eight hours a day. I mean, paddling can't be that different, can it? It will also deal with some problem solving. So you're going to run into problems that you don't see when you take your boat out for an hour, but suddenly when you're six hours, eight hours or longer, you're going to start seeing other issues developing. And of course, the ultimate purpose is to get you to the finish line. So how many of these long days should you do? Well, according to Carter Johnson in a 2007 interview with Merrick, uh, Merrick's blog, and I believe it's called uh, Fit to Paddle or Paddle for Fitness, something along those lines. I'll try and link it in the description below. You want to do one to two of these long days per race. So you want to do at least one or two before the 340. This isn't necessarily a weekly thing. You don't want to break your body down. And let's talk about some of the goals, some of the things that you need to prepare for. First of all, you want to be prepared for anything, even bear attacks. Now, bears are pretty rare in Missouri. They're much more common up near Chicago, but it's okay because they rarely hit their target there. So, first you want to deal with chafing and seating issues. You could go with thermarest seats, which people do quite frequently. You can go with backband seats. I will do a whole video on seats, so uh, bear with me on that. But, ironically enough, a happy butt makes for a happy paddler. You want to be as comfortable as possible. So make sure that if that seat makes you tippy, you know about it in training. You don't want to be tippy on the 340. If the seat makes you uncomfortable after four hours. You want to know about that in training and make adjustments. You also want to play with nutrition. Not only eating in the boat, learning how to eat in the boat, either efficiently or at least without taking a swim, but you also want to test out your nutrition and your nutrition could be anything. I've seen very successful paddlers going down river with Pringles and donuts and Mountain Dew. I've seen people with the standard uh, jerky, juice, etc. There's a lot of guys out there who will use nothing but Hammer Perpetuum or Sustained Energy or any of those products, Spits and some of the others. 
you want to test those out in these long training days. You want to see if it's going to make you nauseous. So if you were to do a really long training day, say, I don't know, the Missouri Freedom Race, that would be a perfect time to really test these out and make sure that they're not going to cause a problem. You want to check your storage. Make sure that not only does it balance, so is your storage going to alter your center of gravity? If you put your hydration system, for example, on the back deck, is it going to make you tippier as opposed to putting it inside the boat? You also want to deal with issues of reach. Can you reach that bag? Because by day two, even though that bag is a few inches in front of you on the deck of your boat, you may not want to reach for it. So you may have to come up with different plans for how to store things in the boat. Of course, you want to practice absolutely everything in the boat. Do yourself a favor. Take a couple of peas in the boat. I mean, preferably clean it out afterwards or pee into a receptacle or see my video peeing in a boat. But either way, you want to make sure that you do everything in the boat. If your plan is to cool off by jumping out of the boat at a boat ramp and sitting in the water, then practice that. Make sure that as much as possible on these long days, you basically have a checklist and you're just checking things off that you've done them as well as doing that six hour long paddle. This is 340 Paddler hoping that you keep your paddle in the water.